fundraisers, I'm Don Lego. It's time to buckle up once again for a new episode of Race Nation Radio, the one and only podcast made to inspire fundraisers like you to continue making impact in our communities, building better tomorrows and exchanging ideas. So whether you're a trailblazer or seasoned pro, you're going to pick up the trends that transform your fundraising. And together, we'll dive into lively conversations and chat with industry-leading fundraisers and thought leaders to explore hot-button issues and innovative ideas. So stay with us for the next 30 minutes while we inspire you to embrace the future of fundraising. Well, let's get going. Welcome back. Um, For those of you who have joined the show before, it's so great to connect with you again for our weekly episode. If you're new to Raise Nation Radio, you can find us on any of your favorite podcast channels on demand at onecause.com. And if you're attending the Raise 2022 conference, we are on the Raise conference app as well. So you can find us anywhere. But I'm super excited excited to talk, um, to welcome our guests to the show this week and to talk about a very special topic. Um, It's part of my why and my personal journey here at One Cause, and I believe it's part of the why for my 300 plus peers here. We're going to chat about Indie Tech Gives. Um, And just like the name implies, it's Indiana and maybe even a little bit further uh, based technology companies that come together uh, to do a little bit more than just I shouldn't say just, but do more than deliver outstanding software and services. They come together for the greater good and to build better tomorrows, as we like to say at One Cause. So I am super excited to um, welcome my good friend and peer, um, Steve Lausch, Director of Product Marketing at One Cause, and Megan Sweeney Hyde, who is the Campaign Events Manager for Make a Wish America. Megan, Steve, welcome to the show. Hello. Thanks for having us. Don, it is so great to be here with you. Thanks for having us. Well, I've been waiting a long time to have you both here with scheduling and um all of that that goes into it because I'm super excited to talk about Indie Tech Gives 2022. But before we get to that, I want our audience to get to know both of you a little bit more. So we're going to do ladies first. Megan, just want to tell our Raise Nation audience, you know, who you are, what you do for Make-A-Wish and um, just introduce yourself. Hi, um, sure. Uh, Megan Sweeney Hyde. Um, I am with Make a Wish America. Um, I've been with Make a Wish as an organization for a little over four years, um, and have been in, in nonprofits and fundraising pretty much my entire career. So, um, so I'm really excited to be here today and talk to everyone. Thank you. All right, Steve, you're up. Yeah, Steve Lausch, uh, Director of Product Marketing at One Cause. I just celebrated earlier this year, five years at One Cause. Uh, it is thrilling to be part of such a company uh, that supports some of the most amazing people, that uh, being our nonprofit friends. Um, and man, I'm looking forward to another five, maybe 10 years here, just doing the same and, and uh, yeah, taking things forward. Better be 10 years, better be more than that. (laughs) We're not going to let you go anywhere anytime soon, Mr. Lausch. So I'm going to start with you. Now we're going to do gentlemen first. Um, Steve, can you just do a much better introduction than I did um, to the Indie Tech Gives program? Where did it all start? What is it? Um, How many years running? All that good stuff. Sure. let our sure. audience know. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, happy to, happy to. And and as you uh, referred to, Don, just for in case uh, folks didn't catch it, Indy refers to the city of Indianapolis, uh, where One Cause is based, where our headquarters are just on the north side of Indy. So Indy Tech Gives is a program that started in 2019. And it really is the result of us asking a couple of questions. Um, We, of course, uh, provide fundraising software to professional fundraisers in the nonprofit world. And so with something like, um, you know, uh, having such a wide spectrum of event and online fundraising solutions, one of the things we have is this tremendously powerful peer-to-peer fundraising software. And so those questions that we asked were, well, what if we take this peer-to-peer software and we give it to the Indianapolis technology community for free? 
any indie tech business could have our software for free for six weeks in any given summer. And then what would happen if, if we were to provide a framework that made it easy for businesses to then set their employees loose, engage their employees in fundraising for a charity of that business's choice and effectively practice practical social good. And what I mean by that, Don, is oftentimes in the corporate setting, yes, there's wonderful things going on. There's all kinds of checks written from the back office, but you and me and all the other employees really don't know the difference until we read about it in the, in the newsletter that month. This sure. would provide the business to engage their entire employee base in a way so that they are practically involved, serving, supporting, getting to know, building relationship with a nonprofit of their choice using the One Cause Peer-to-Peer platform. Wow. So connecting the dots, the nonprofit of choice for One Cause this year was Make a wish. the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. And that's why we have Megan on today. So Megan, I'm going to turn to you. Sure. you Make-A-Wish America is, I, I hope, a household name. It's certainly a nationally recognized brand. Sure. And I think when people think of or hear Make-A-Wish, they immediately go to, oh, a nice gesture, wish something for a terminally ill child. But that's not really the case. The case is um, wishes are granted to um, any young um, person under the age of 18, I believe, that has a life-threatening situation, not necessarily terminally ill. And that wish really has major impact on the wishy, on the family, and on all the people that are involved, um, it's it's it really is a community of of more than just the witch. So I'm going to let you explain all of that if you don't mind. Yeah, well, you did such a great job, um, especially with the misconception that a lot of people, when they hear Make a Wish, they think that this is the last wish, um, which is not the case. Um, and so, you know, there, we, our mission for Make-A-Wish is together we create life-changing wishes for children who battle critical illnesses. Um, and, you know, that is, you know, some of our wishes that we that we grant are to see, um, to meet your favorite celebrity or to go somewhere exotic like Hawaii or a wish to be an astronaut or a movie director or, or wishes to have like an RV camper. Um, you know, it really, when, when a child receives a wish, it really tells a child and shows a child that the community cares about them, that, um, you know, we are here for them. And it's something positive, right? Like we are, especially now more than ever, there's such an emphasis on mental health and well-being. And you know, just, I mean, I just um, got back from a trip, you know, and leading up to a trip, you're always looking forward to it. Sometimes you might even have a countdown for it. Um, And then after reflecting, looking at pictures, um, that's just one example of like having something to look forward to. If we, if we feel that way, how could you imagine being a child that's going through treatment and having something for their parents to have some common ground and brother and sisters to get behind. Um, it's, it's truly a magical thing um, that about what we do for these kiddos. And it's, it's a lot of fun to see them transform and to see the creativity behind some of these wishes. And you were so great, Megan, with our team um, explaining all of that and, and how the wish, the before, during and after, it, it really becomes maybe the glue that holds a family together. It, it, it kind of um, infuses, you know, that hope and that positivity because it's, it's not a pretty picture living in, you know, a hospital room day in and day out, but come on, you know, puts the fight, puts the hope we're going to Hawaii or or whatever the case is. And in a couple of weeks or a couple of months, you know, you got to fight, you got to do this. And I'm actually just getting chills talking about it, but that is what's happening, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. And what's really something that's new and that we've really incorporated now is what about what happens after the wish. Right. And so we even have um, we've just hired on um, over a year ago and created a a role where we're working with our wish alumni. Right. Like, you know, what does this wish do five years from now, 10 years from now? You know, there's a lot of. wish alumni who become doctors or nurses, or, you know, they want to, um, 
like I said, a movie director, or if maybe they want to be a singer, that's what their career path is taking them to. Um, or just having memories of having their family together. Um, you know, we've really been focusing on building that community and staying in touch with those individuals and bringing them together in their own communities and within their chapters. Um, you know, some even work for Make-A-Wish now um, or have decided to intern. So it's really fun to see where this wish takes them, even after years after as well, and, and the impact that it has. So yeah, like I love that. Say, it's not a last wish, but truly it, it can be a lasting wish in so many ways. Yeah, it has everlasting effect. And, and I love that you take such care in granting the wish. It's not you know, the staple, which I think people are familiar with. Oh, I want to go to Disney. You're right. really getting close with that family and coming up with an intentional wish that may turn into a career, as you mentioned, doctor, lawyer, film director, and um, giving them a taste of perhaps their future. So it's just beautiful to see. I learned so much going through the, you know, indie tech um, program and, and hearing um, all of the stories that you shared. But Steve, let me, let me direct you. How did, how did it come to be that one cause you can, can you share who were some of the recipients in past indie tech gives program and how did it come to be that um, one, uh, one cause selected make a wish this year? Yeah, sure. Well, we have, um, we have had a good number since 2019 of nonprofits who have benefited from the Indie Tech Gives program. And we've had varying numbers of companies. For example, in 2022, this year, we had eight businesses that participated. And uh, Obviously, eight different nonprofits were benefiting. So we have nonprofits that were uh, in the animal animal well, what, oh, excuse me, animal welfare space. I can say that ten times fast. <laughs> Suicide prevention and awareness, um, youth sports programs, STEM programs for underserved populations. Um, many years uh, of doing this, we've had family assistance shelters that have benefited, and of course, you just heard all the great reasons of exactly why. One Cause reached out to make a Wish America, and uh, it was a delight to work with Megan uh, to partner in this way and support make a Wish America. But so many different nonprofits over the years, and Don, I probably should have kind of given some context to your listeners. Um, we have thus far raised over two hundred fifteen thousand dollars just in these few years uh, for the Central Indiana uh, nonprofit. So the program is is really taking off and making, so much good. Yeah, it's yeah. making it's making waves and 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 creating good, and it's just so so thrilling. So, was there a goal um, this year for? One cause and make wish because I, I think I'm getting the picture. Um, yeah. We have so many, we're benefiting many different organizations, but it's almost like a peer to peer campaign within a peer to peer. It's like multiple peer to peer campaigns within <laughs> an overarching umbrella of peer to peer, right? Well, I'm, not, I'm not bashful to say it. That's the beauty of the software. I mean, yeah. it, we can do so much with it. So um, I'll just speak to that point and then I'll, I'll, I'll go to your, your question about the goal. So yes, absolutely. With, uh, within all of these different participating businesses, you have individuals who are competing against other individuals, and then they group as teams, and those teams have a level of competition. And then those teams within those companies have all kinds of incentives, whether it's, um, you know, pizza parties, days off, um, gift cards, etc. The company is helping to drive that competition. And then, of course, what gets fun is when you have company versus company on LinkedIn or or, you know, certainly texting each other and just talking smack. And it's all about fundraising. And it just it just all happens in six weeks. Well, what happened at one cause, you asked? Uh, our goal is $20,000 for Make-A-Wish America. And I'm what was very the happy. final tally? Yeah, Drum roll, final, please. The final yeah. tally was well over 21. So we oh, crushed oh. our goal. And uh, it was so good to, to be able to, uh, quote unquote, hand Megan that check. And I know that that went directly to, to making wishes, to granting wishes that are going to matter in the lives of real people. OK, well, I'm going to get to that point in just a second, but I still want to stay on this whole, you know, peer to peer thing, if you don't mind, Steve. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I participated every year. I made my donation. I've been around One Cause for a long time. I'm familiar with our 
software, of course, because I was on new business side for 10 years. So of course I'm familiar, but our software really did all of like, I made my donation. I did my posts. I took advantage of some of the features and benefits, but we did all of that. We had this overarching and then all of these companies and teams and it like, yeah. really? I mean, because yeah. even I'm a little bit gobsmacked and I know my software. So can you just elaborate on that? Yeah, a little bit we more? had, we had the, these different businesses. We had eight different businesses that were engaging all within the singular program um, supported by the peer to peer software. Um, some of them may be names that our audience may not be familiar with, but some of them, they would have. I mean, I'm sure people have heard of, of uh, WebEx and Salesforce and uh, maybe within the nonprofit community, Boardable. I, I know they do uh, board management software. So uh, they're also here in Indianapolis. But yes, exactly. 300 professionals, nearly 300 professionals from the tech community uh, across these eight companies formed over 40 teams. Um my goodness, it, it all came to uh, somewhere, it was right, right around $61,000 for good. Wow, yeah. good, good, yeah. good, 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 good. Yeah, I mean, it was easy, I have to say, because now I'm looking at it from a lens of a, of a participant, a donor, and somebody who works at One Cause. And you know, you guys keep me pretty busy here. So I needed it to be easy. I needed it to meet me where I was, whether I was, you know, taking a few minutes to make a post right before bed on my mobile device, you know, online, whenever I could fit it in, it did really make it easy. And I know that probably sounds so staged coming from me working no. from one cause, but no, it was the truth. Giving has to be easy. Giving has to be easy. And, and the power of a peer to peer campaign, um, and it doesn't always have to be at this level, right? It doesn't have to be eight different companies, but what I would hope our listeners would consider is, what could they do reaching yeah. out to a company or two or three companies and structuring a very simple peer-to-peer -peer campaign uh, that would help them raise 20, 30, $40,000 without much lift. Yeah. Um, Indie Tech Gives is just a great uh, template of an idea. I was just going to say yeah. that if you need the inspiration, just go to the there site and you can got right. Exactly. Correct. So that's a that's a that's a bonus plan, I think. Well, Megan, let me let me turn to you now. What I'd love to know from you, what did that mean? I mean, I'm sure you get donations of all sizes. I would think twenty one thousand dollars is is sizable, but certainly not the largest that you've that you've gotten. What not just in terms of financial, but what did it mean for the donation, the awareness that came with it? We had so many participants you know, making posts and on social. So between the financial, the awareness, and to know that your technology partner wanted to not just deliver to you outstanding software and services, but wanted to go do more, give more, be more, and help you build better tomorrows. What did all of that mean to the Make-A-Wish America Foundation? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it just, it felt amazing to, it, and I've worked with One Cause in some capacity, pretty much most of my my fundraising career. So, um, you know, I was um, able to have the opportunity to come out to the celebration in Indianapolis. And it was, it was great just to meet everybody, to meet the other nonprofits that benefited and hear their why and what they do. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like with working in a nonprofit, um, I have the advantage of, I get to see the good in people, right? And, you know, some days, you know, we all have bad days, but, you know, that this is just one of those examples of just the good in people and that for, for the most part, people want to do good things. They want to get out there and make a difference. And, um, and this is just a prime example of that, right? Um, and, and to meet good people too, right? Um, so I, you know, the whole experience was was just great and i was we were honored to be to be chosen um as a nonprofit of choice for one cause um and from a financial point there is a little bit of um of i guess calculation that i can provide is the average cost of a wish is up around ten thousand dollars so what is so exciting is that one cause was able to grant two life-changing magical wishes to our wish kiddos which 
I mean, that's, that's just so amazing. And you guys should be so proud of yourself. Um, and then yeah, that overarching number of 60,000, I mean, and, and how many weeks was this campaign? It was about six, yeah, six weeks. That's huge, right? That's, (laughs) that's a lot of money in a short period of time that you guys should be so proud of. Um, so I, I mean, again, I was able to come out and, and meet the, um, come out to the community and, and meet you guys. And it was just, it was such a great experience um, and, and whatnot. So I'm glad, very glad and honored to, again, be a part of, of this campaign. Well, I think the honor is really ours, right? You know, to be mm-hmm. able to um, just uh, work for the greater good and and to deliver um a donation of any size really you know the honor yeah. honor was ours um I, I'm, I'm curious though i'd love to d- dive a little bit deeper you know into the whole make-a-wish um america foundation and sure. i i think the story of where it all started is pretty intriguing and um some of the early um community that that started make a wish is, is still involved today can you tell us that story megan yeah well and it's it's funny that you mentioned that because i just got back from um phoenix where make a wish america had their first um their first wish granted a little bit over 40 years ago um so wow make a wish was founded um uh all because of a little boy named Chris Gracious, um, who um, was diagnosed um, with leukemia. So he had a blood cancer and his one true wish was to be a police officer. And, you know, the whole community got behind it. Um, You know, that he was in a helicopter all the way to, you know, um, receiving um, in Phoenix, he, he got his police badge. It was, it was, it's a really amazing story that um, I'd love to send you some videos of. And I was just um, fortunate enough to meet his mother and to hear her talk about her side of the story and just the magic that Chris had throughout his health journey of, uh, you know, his mother was a single mom and, you know, having a kiddo that, that was sick throughout that whole process and to have the whole community come together to show again, uh, not get, not just get to get behind this little boy, but, to get behind her and to uplift her. And it's truly amazing the impact that that wish still has today. And that thanks to- 40 years later. 40 years later, (laughs) and we're still able to grant wishes just like Chris's. And um, that's really the heart of why and what we do. Um, And that legacy is still very, very strong today. Megan, do you know, uh, just a stat off the top of your head. I'm, I'm not yeah. sure this is fair to ask, but how many wishes have been granted um, over the 40 years, or is that just a number too difficult to calculate? Um, I we so we just finished our fiscal year. Can you give me one second? I can pull something up because we just finished our fiscal year. I want to give you the right number. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. In, in, We're in, a few days into our new fiscal year, so uh, give me one second, and I can kind sure. of I can't circle back on that one because. That's- um, That's okay. That was unfair. I didn't prepare. Uh, that wasn't fair of me. I no, I love it. It's <laughs> the beauty of a live podcast. Here, right. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I don't want to misspeak to that number. That's that's my only concern. Um, give me one second, though, and I can. Sure. Point. No. Well, in the meantime, let me let me direct this over to Steve. Steve, where do you see this program going? We're what three, four years in now, and it has grown and. Um, with you know the number of participants and donations and companies and um, nonprofits that have benefited, um, you know you mentioned some nice numbers uh, over two hundred thousand dollars in donations, well over. Where do you see this going in the future, or where do you hope it's going? Well, I'll tell you, my personal goal for 2023 is to cross that quarter million mark. There is just something about the sound of that, knowing that um, real professionals in the tech businesses uh, throughout central Indiana have uh, facilitated the giving of a quarter million dollars to good is just, that's my near-term goal for next year. Where it goes from there, uh, Don, uh, we'll surf this wave as long as it keeps going. I mean, it. There's, there's a, and, and that's a great metaphor because sometimes the wave is good and high and, and sometimes you have a year like 2020 where we had to, I'm going to use the term. We had to pivot. It was yeah. a different year, and uh, it was just a different year altogether. But um, 
I, I, my hope is that uh, word keeps uh, uh, you know going out and more and more tech companies participate, which means more and more uh, tech professionals participate, which means more and more people are impacted, uh, involved, and uh, certainly uh, making a difference through Indie Tech Gives. So I don't know, check with me in two or three yeah. years. We'll, well, we'll I'll have to invite again. you back. Will, will you do another <laughs> podcast with us and keep keep the journey and the story you going, bet. hopefully? You, bet. Um, you know, what's interesting, though, what, what sparked something while you were speaking in my brain was that we're no different than our nonprofit customers and partners, right? We had this, we have the same fundraising challenge. So that in 2020, 2021, um, the pivot, the hybrid, all those words that we don't want to use, we experience the exact same challenges. So when we go back to our desk every day, we're intimate and have empathy with our, with our customers because we, we went through it the exact same thing. We, we face the same challenges. We're not, we're not. Or do we, or do we ever, or do we ever, and, 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 you know, we, um, you know, we could talk for an hour more and I know we're probably come down on time, but we, we've experienced all the highs of seeing like big numbers come in all at once. And then the lows of like, oh, are we going to make our goal? And how is this going to all come together? And you know what it does. And you just you just take that next step and you just stay focused and you keep doing what you love. And, you know, well, we've had so many thought leaders on Raise Nation Radio who have said, you, you just have to keep asking. You just have to keep going. Yeah. You just yeah. have to keep moving forward. Do something better than doing nothing better than going, going dark. Um, so it's good to see that we take our own advice that we give to our nonprofit partners. So Megan, how are we doing on that, on that number? Did we, okay, that number, yeah. and again, I wanted to, we just finished our fiscal year for, um, for 2022. So that's why I want to get the most accurate one. Um, so 520,000. <gasps> no. Yes. Did wow. you just say that 520,000? Yes. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. You've are- changed 520,000 lives. Wow. Congratulations, Megan, Thank and you. to the entire Make a Wish America team. That is that that's a lot of work. Well, and it's a whole community. And, and so something that, um, you know, we have wish granters that come out to the houses or now we, we're able to do more Zoom, um, you know, from that to, you know, our, our volunteers to our in-kind partners, you know, that help us. Uh, we have so many great in-kind um, partners and, and corporate partners that really help, you know, from like Southwest Airlines that help donate travel credits and I, the list goes on. Um to, you know, our staff that are in chapters um, and the communities that really get behind this. So it takes a, a, a large community and, and a, a, to make all this happen. Village, we're, for sure. We're so grateful for. You know, I didn't know what number you're going to hit us with, but in my <laughs> wildest guesses, I uh, thank God I'm not a betting woman because I would have lost that bet. That is really special. Well, I can't believe it's been, you know, well over a half hour already. I do have one more question for each of you before we wrap up this episode. Steve, first to you, somebody wants to get involved. We're hearing this, you know, podcast and there may be um, an indie tech based company. And they're like, hmm, you know what? I need to get my team involved for the greater good. We've made it so easy. So how would they get involved? What's their first step? Who do they contact? Well, I would say the easiest one is just to reach out to myself and, uh, you know, we can, we can, uh, make uh, LinkedIn is the, is the best way to do it. So there we uh, go. that's where I've had a lot of relationship building with our local tech professionals and, and the companies, um, involved there. Yeah. We will take, uh, anyone and everyone interested, as you can well imagine, this is a program that kind of builds itself because the framework is there. So whether we have eight companies next next year, like we did this year, or we have 18, uh, it'll be it'll be great. So, so yeah, find Steve Lausch, L-A-U-S-C-H. S-C-H. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there we go on LinkedIn. And you know what? We should give a shout out. Who built the campaign behind the scenes? Who are some of our peers that oh my we just gosh. would like to recognize? I oh, know Kim Dawn, Hall is one of I, them. <laughs> if I start naming names, I'm going to like leave people out. I, yeah. I just... I, I, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna ask not to go there. It is so long. There are people who served as ambassadors to the different companies. There are people, uh, and all of these within the one cause team. Um, there were people who stepped up and said, "Hey, I want to be a team captain because I believe in what's going on, and I'm going to represent our department or parts of our department." There were people who stepped up and said, "Hey, I want to I want to help from a consulting standpoint and a support standpoint." Uh, there were people who stepped. Up, I mean. Yeah. Endless. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) We we won't go there. (laughs) We won't go there. Well then Megan, same kind of question to you. Um, you know, hearing the story, understanding a little bit more about the mission and everything that's involved. And if somebody wants to be part of, you know, what is it? The number 520,001, if they want to be part of that next wish, what's the best way for somebody to get involved? What's the best way for somebody to nominate somebody for a wish? Can you give us all that direction, please? Yeah. Um, So it's kind of two-sided question then. So if someone wants to get involved with Make-A-Wish, you know, like I said, we have wish granters. We, We just have a great a lot of great ways that you can get involved from a volunteer perspective. So I would encourage you to reach out to your local chapter. If you don't know where that is, go to wish.org, um, type in your zip code, and you'll find your most lo- your local chapter and reach out to them. Um, and then as far as um, how to become eligible for WISH, so if, if you know somebody that has been um, diagnosed with a critical illness and want to learn more if that if their illness um, would fit into the, these criteria for WISH, um, talk to your doctor. Um, doctors, our doctors are our largest referral partners. Um, and then again, check out our website. Um, so there's three ways that you can be referred for a wish, and that would be by your doctor. Um, the parents can, or even the child can refer themselves for a wish. Um, so, so that's that. That would be my um, suggestion on on both ends. For so it all happens at wish.org. Whether you want to volunteer, wish.org. donate, or um, maybe you want to take advantage of what a wish can do to, yeah. to change change your life, it's all there on wish.org. It's well, I great. want to thank you both so much. Thank Fearless you. fundraisers. That's about all we have time for today. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed today's Raise Nation topic and your daily dose of fundraising inspiration. Tune in for a new episode release every Thursday at 1230 p.m. Eastern time. That's Thursdays at 1230 p.m. In the meantime, be sure to listen to all the episodes on Raise Nation Radio. Follow your favorite channel so that you can get the notifications about our new guests. Fundraisers are doing amazing things to build better tomorrows for our communities. The stories are awe-inspiring, as you just heard, and you won't want to miss a single episode. I would like to thank our sponsor, One Cause, for making this episode possible. One Cause is driving the future of fundraising with easy-to-use software solutions that help nonprofits connect with their donors. Be sure to check us out at onecause.com and visit the resource tab on the homepage for a broad catalog of ebooks and blogs, more podcasts and webinars that you'll find super helpful. A huge shout out and thanks to my guests um, for sharing expert and authentic voices today. Steve, Megan, thank you so much for being with us. Any last words of inspiration? We'll start with you, Megan. Sure. Well, I'm just going to bring up my favorite fundraising quote really quick. Um, I know we have only a minute, but fundraising is the gentle art of teaching the joy of giving by Hank Rosso. And that is what you guys are doing is teaching the art of giving and the joy that 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 brings in. So I I mean, that's I mean, just kudos to all fundraisers and, and our fundraising community, because that's our, our objective and what we're here for. That was beautiful. Oh, you're <laughs> giving me chills again, the second time in this uh, episode. Steve, I, what about you? Uh, you're a man of inspiration in my book. Any last words of inspiration? You know what? I'm going to go back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago and just the importance of just taking the next step. And I think that is something that, that as simple as it is, it is something we could stand to hear every day. Sometimes multiple times a day uh, because we're all climbing hills and some of us are climbing some pretty steep ones right now. Uh, Some of us are involved in fundraising campaigns and maybe it's not going as well as we had hoped. Some of us are trying to uh, uh, deliver programming in difficult times. Just take the next step and you'll do great. Good advice. We took that advice ourselves. Well, thank you again both so much for your time today and uh, joining us on the show. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, Fearless Fundraisers, that's a wrap. Until next time, I'm Don Lego. This is Raise Nation Radio. You stay fearless out there. 